How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today yeah I'm gonna go and give this thing a review the IX3A80 uh, Heavy Wrecker. I was considering downloading some other mods on that but to be honest I still wanted to have a little mess around and test with this with all the different options. It's got quite a lot of different things. So yeah I thought I'd uh, do a proper review of it tonight see how it stacks up against the rest and then hopefully tomorrow I'll probably get rid of this and actually just move on to a few other mods. So first things first we'll go through the upgrades You've got all the normal engines, but then it also gives you, you can see these two options, it's got like, in brackets, SE and OP. SE is Special Edition, OP is Overpowered. Uh, so you've got everything from like stock to overpowered. For the sakes of this, I'm mostly going to go for OP, but you'll see I'll vary a few different things. Uh, that adds a hell of a lot of power to it. At the minute, both engines like said uh, S+, plus, but when you put the big wrecker thing on the back, the best normal engine goes down to like B+. Uh, the gearbox again you've got a few different ones I've gone for like a special high range. The suspension you've got normal, raised or active. The active about the same as raised but you can lift it up and down. Um, yeah as for the tyres each group I'm going through is I think it's 43 inch, 46 and 49 so just say pay attention to like the little bottom bunch of each one but you've got uh, like the normal ones, the all terrains, they look pretty cool. It's added quite a lot of variations Again, in the brackets, you can see OP, SE, V, I think, is like variant or something. I think that's pretty standard. Um, yeah, the tyres I'm going to end up going for, I believe, are OP. But they have got quite a nice balance. Like I said, there's some that are literally OP, and the stats you can see are like excellent, 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 excellent on them ones. Uh, yeah, that's got OP in the brackets. And then you've got sort of the special edition ones that are like pretty good, excellent, excellent, and good. And that, and then usually when you go on to the ones that's got like a V in the little brackets, it's more like, you know, good, average, etc. Pretty standard sort of tyres compared to the rest, I would say. Uh, the chained as well, there's very, there's a couple of different ones, but instead of having chained on, they've got little studs in the tyres, which I think is pretty cool. And I've been saying for quite a while that they need to add like some studded tyres to have, uh, yeah, some variation over just chained. Um, all the different sorts, there's kind of like the dual rears, the single rears, or there's like a big single wide tyre. I've gone for the dual rears, which I think uh, look pretty cool. The winches, all the normal options, but you've also got these top two. That one says OP. If it can't take you to the tree, it'll bring the tree to you or something. That's the one I went for. It is pretty bloody strong, to be fair. Uh, next up is the snorkels. I'm going for the like wedge cap thing, but the normal ones you can get, are, like you can get them colour coded, but they kind of act as like a matte metal with the same colour as a truck, it's pretty nice to be honest. Um, all wheel drive, yeah I've gone for all wheel drive upgrade, it does when you buy it come as uh, just rear wheel drive. So next up is all the different uh, frame add-ons and that, there's quite a lot to choose from, you've got like a, a side board that's three slot, a two slot and a three slot roll back which is pretty bloody cool, I've only used a three slot one but I'm sure the two slots basically the same. Um, yeah, this is the main thing, this big rotator 70 ton thing, you get a crane on the back, you can also add this on that's like, uh, what's it, a rotator axle lift or something. And uh, yeah, this is pretty cool, I'd say this is like the main purpose of the truck really. You can get a sleep cab on the back and then when you go through some of the options, you can add like little repair points that sit on and near it. You've got the saddle high and saddle low. Uh, the cranes you see near the end, the little cranes, I'll show you later, they're alright but they're not very powerful, like they're, yeah, a bit flimsy. Um, as for these add-ons, mud flaps, for some reason you have to add them to add the roll back and all that. If I add them now, it'll remove that rotator thing. Uh, as for all these upgrades, I mean, I've just gone for like fog lights and colour-coded sun visor. I'm not really going to uh, stay on these for too long. There's like the colour-coded metal uh, radiator and everything that's, at the minute, I've got the truck painted red, so it's giving it like a red hue. But yeah, if you go yellow, it'll have like, almost look sort of gold and all sorts. Uh, just various different add-ons again, it's like colour-coded mirrors and I think, yeah, the fuel tanks, the bottom of the bumper, all pretty regular stuff. Next up is the uh, exhaust, I really like the look of these to be honest, they just look pretty nice. Um, you got the two options though, the straight pipes or you got the ones that have got a little sort of kink in them. Don't go for these straight ones because basically the smoke absolutely pours out of it and you can't, it's like the Navisar, you just can't see sod all. For whatever reason, when you buy the ones that are split, not only does it spread the smoke out, but it's nowhere near as dense either, so yeah, you can actually see what you're doing. Uh, as for all the different colours, again, you can see like the exhaust pipes, fuel tanks, etc. all change in like sort of colours, but they've actually been made, you know, to look like metal, sort of a matte coloured finish. 
I like the fact that they've actually added black that's just pure black, like a nice new paint job. The same with white and all the rest of it. These are some of the different custom colours. They're all just sort of like a few nice bright colours with a black stripe down it. Uh, yeah, I like pretty much all of them, to be honest. Even that last one doesn't look too bad. Uh, I think I just mix and match through the colours throughout the night. And uh, lastly as well, we've got, when you go over to this, like the add-ons, I'm not going to bother with all the bobbleheads and everything, but when you buy this front bumper that's got a little, uh, what do you call it, a hood ornament, when you remove it again, it takes the whole hood away, so not that I necessarily think that's a bad thing, it's pretty cool, it's like a way to get rid of the uh, bonnet if you just want to look at the engine. So we're going to take a look at it. Uh, yeah, I really like the look of this truck. It's a, it looks like a big meaty thing. The tyres all suit well. Nice steering on it and that. I like the look of the sort of American long nose stuff like I say over here. We get a lot of cab overs. Which do look cool as well, but it's just nice to see something different. As for the interior, fairly basic, but not in a bad way. The mirror's a little bit iffy. There's a sleeper cab, so super wanks are plenty. And there's a laptop in there, which has a play button suspiciously, suspiciously the same colour as Pornhub. <laughs> so... They know what they're doing. Uh, yeah, stick your head out the window, the exhaust gets in the way. In the driver's side mirror though, I could see my rear tyres, which is pretty nice. The horn is uh, good. Very nice, bit like some train horn or something. Uh, yeah, fire it up. Good thing is, the revs are bloody quick. It goes up to about five and a half thousand or something. It's, you know, practically instant. Again, I've got the OP engine in at the minute. This big wrecker thing on the back adds a lot of weight to this. So the OP engine isn't that OP when you've got this set up. Um, when you've got nothing on the whole truck, it's a bit... It's definitely, you notice it then, it's a lot more uh, crazy. As for all the trailers and everything, it's pretty cool. You can have the little Scout trailers as well, which they should just do anyway. I mean, it's not going to break the game if I can tow a bloody Scout fuel trailer with a Dolphin. Um, yeah, so as for all some of the different features and everything on the truck, I'll just uh, fly through them quickly. So main first thing, you've got the crane. Uh, it actually moves pretty quick, left to right, goes up and down pretty well as well. It's got another length to it, <laughs> that's definitely what she said. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of strength, so it could lift like a Kolob in the air. Um, minus wheeling, but yeah, it's got the strength to lift a Kolob. Uh, you've got a hood thing that can flip up and down. You've got a suspension that can, yeah, raise and lower. You've got these anchors, that's why I just put the suspension down. If you got the suspension all the way up, they just about touch the floor, but there's not really a lot of uh, pressure on them. And then lastly, you got this like rotator axle thing, which you can uh, yeah extend out, up and down, all the rest of it. But it's also got, if you go down to like, when you go into the menu, press square instead of triangle. And it's got, you see like the little axle hooks each side. You can move each one. Uh, one of them's like R2 and L2, one of them's X and square, or square and triangle or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, so you can like line it up with the axles. I don't really know how accurate it is, but you'll see in a sec. I mean, it's not bad. You can hook some trucks with it. And they stay on pretty damn well, all things considered. So uh, yeah, we'll send the dolphin in. In the end, I was just doing like driving over it because the dolphin's got two front axles. It's pretty handy if it just sits between them. Yeah, it locks it in there pretty well. But as far as the actual power of that ac uh, rotator axle lift thing, absolutely no issues lifting the dolphin. You might want to move your crane a little bit higher and out of the way because I think I'd already moved it up a little bit. But yeah, you'll... Uh, kind of smash the truck into it. So I just uh, pulled the anchors in and then I lifted the suspension up so that's what it's like driving along when you've got the uh, raised suspension which yeah is pretty handy and you can see I mean it drives along pretty well but because the weight of that dolphin is sat on uh, that axle lift thing whatever it is it's kind of like yeah it's putting all the weight behind my rear tyres and lifting me up. If you use this crane it kind of like brings the weight point to the middle of the truck again onto the pistons and the crane. However, when you attach the uh, dolphin or something pretty heavy, you go to drive forward and it starts wheeling. At the minute, I've got the front bumper on it that adds extra mass to the truck. A few of the bumpers say like it adds 1,250 kilograms and the other one adds two and a half tons basically, 2,500 kilograms. That's the one I've got on. Yeah, <laughs> not letting that uh, little concrete wall stop me. Uh, yeah, I mean, it can lift the Dolphin just fine, but as you can see, when you go to drive, it's just, there's not quite enough weight in the front, so it can't quite handle it. I'm sure some of the lighter trucks, it won't be too bad. The Dolphins are, like, pretty much impossible to lift with a normal crane, so it's, uh, yeah, certainly registers on the heavy scale, but 
trying to give it a go, <laughs> flying it like a kite, start getting a bit of a wiggle on there for some reason, a little tank slapper. All things considered though, it's a uh, yeah, good start, I do like it. I think at the minute as well have I got, oh yeah, I've still got the uh, studded tyres on. Like I said, I mixed some match throughout the night. So, because this wasn't working, drastic times call for drastic measures, something like that. <laughs> so, we've got ourselves a goddamn horse of a vehicle, he's a weight distribution loaf. Not the first time he's made an appearance, won't be the last. And yeah, I was seeing, could it weigh down the front? <laughs> After that, I mean, this is a goddamn professional. Everyone needs to get themselves a loaf. That might well be the money shot right there. Um, yeah, a weight distribution loaf works. Stick it on the roof and the bonnet. It's kind of hooked its wheels over the cab. And uh, it's close. <laughs> I am still wheeling a little bit, but I'm not just completely wheeling and going up on my back end. Good times I had by all. Dolphin's flying pretty uh, pretty well, if I do say so myself. But yeah, I mean, as far as testing all the little features and everything on it, pretty good. It's nice that the crane actually works and lifts stuff as it should without you having to, like, wiggle it around and pray and all the rest of it. <laughs> it just kept it pinned. The loaf eventually flew off, but it was a good chance to kind of show you that it was trying to wheelie again as soon as the loaf was off there until I uh, rolled and tipped. So anyway, we'll kind of get back to the normal review. Uh, motoring through the mud and everything, I mean, pretty decent. I'm in auto at the minute. It, you can see, though, it does... The mud still can catch you a bit and slow you down. High range is definitely uh, pretty good in this. They've kind of tuned it up. The gearbox is basically a high range gearbox, but as you can see, they've also added high-low, so you've got two lots of low range instead of just the basic uh, low. And then uh, high gear, it said, is like a fast version of high gear, an even faster version. And yeah, it is. It's pretty nice, to be honest. It's not insanely quick. It might look a little bit fast going th through some of like the wiggly sort of sections, but as you're just ticking along on the road, it's quite a nice speed. And generally in this game, I mean, this truck has got the OP engine and all the rest of it, but high gear, you tend to, once you're up to speed, it stays in high gear really well and motors along in most things. It's no different really with this. Nailed them trees, no problem. One nice thing about this wrecker add-on on the back is it's is it 800 or 900 repair points it's got with it. So, uh, yeah, if you smash your truck up along the way, it's kind of like having a free uh, van body add-on or whatever with you. As for getting through the mud, not really any issues. To be fair, I still think that's fairly realistic. It's not like I just motored there like it's nothing. It's just I didn't sit there wheel spinning in, you know, 10 inches of mud or whatever. And considering the amount of tyres at the back, uh, double tyres as well, yeah, there's a lot of grip and everything, so I don't think it's behaving particularly unrealistically at the minute. I think it's, a yeah, just like a pretty meaty, powerful truck. Stick it in high range going up there, winds up to speed, no problem. It does get into high range very easily and nicely. Like, you don't have to be going very fast at all. Tap L1, usually, and you get up into, like, second gear. As soon as you're in second, you can uh, stick it in high. So going over these rocks, this thing isn't specifically like armoured or anything like that. I mean, it's not ruthless for taking damage. The fact that it's got some pretty decent pace to it and weight, obviously like it sort of sits within the general mechanics of the game. You can get some trollish bits where you uh, get, you know, go over barely anything and it sort of tries to delete half the truck. Although I believe stuff like the engine and that's got pretty decent health on this, so you can it can take a pretty good beat in before it actually things start showing up red and being broken and everything. And uh, yeah, you can see picking up a lot of one ones here and there, but I quite like that. That to me is sort of like just simulating wear and tear as you're ticking along. Sort of fly down here, try the... Uh, I've already knocked one of the anti-terrorist barricades down. <laughs> well, it goes through them, no issue. It's probably not a surprise, but... Uh, yeah, get to this Black River Crossing. And again, as you can see, it's not just completely OP mode, it's like going along roads and dirt roads, it motors along just fine, but I, I'm i still convinced, unless anyone can tell me otherwise, that a nice, big, meaty, powerful truck would drive just <laughs> just fine along a dirt road and all the rest of it. This kind of thing would hold it up a bit. I've gone into high-low, diffs on. The diffs aren't always on normally, which I don't really think it's a bad thing. The thing's clearly good enough, like, without them permanently on, so... Uh, yeah, the fact that it's gave you the high-low, it's a pretty nice speed, to be honest, in high-low. And the tyres are only 49-inch, uh, so they're not massive, really. I think the Dolphin is the Dolphin 50 or 51-inch. 
So, uh, yeah, I mean, they're not massive. You can see from the rears, though, if they got any bigger, they'd kind of be overlapping each other. So that's probably what's kept them limited to that kind of size. Uh, going through the snow, no issues. Going over this barrier. Even though the tyres are r relatively small, should we say, it's uh, got the raisable suspension, so I wasn't catching the chassis or anything on there. And climbing over this rock, it's a little bit iffy. It just starts skidding to the side. Just about everything does, to be honest. So I wouldn't say it was particularly successful or unsuccessful. About the same as usual. Uh, I stuck a winch on the trees, though, just to kind of stop me slipping over to the right. And, yeah, we're all good. Again, absolutely no problems going over the barriers. Which, yeah, is nice. <laughs> No, I do go over the barriers. Not so much these days, but particularly when I was scouting a lot of the maps and all the rest of it back in the day, it was, uh, yeah, I did cut over. Like, I took shortcuts and the barriers caught me out a couple of times where I got stuck on them and then I basically had to recover anyway, which wasted all my uh, efforts in trying to take shortcuts. So I soon did get to learn which trucks can and can't get over them, and I uh, certainly prefer the ones that can. It's just a nice, yeah, nice feather in its cap. I mean, no issues clawing up there as well, as there was a little glitch there. I was kind of slipping off to the uh, right. To be fair, this truck's pretty massive for this kind of little rock test, but it did alright. It's got no issues getting up there, it's just more... Yeah, trying to get some of this size to sit on that rock. So, and I was looking forward to this, because I'm about to go and jump the wall, and I was, uh, I was curious, I'd not tried it, this was the first attempt. But I already like, I mean, I'm in high, like this little snow patch here, I normally have to weave around because you'll hit it and it'll absolutely yank you to the left and slow you down. But this thing just motors along, again, as it should. A truck shouldn't be slowed down by a little patch of, like a few inches of snow just sat in the middle of a yard. That, yeah, it. when you switch to interior view, it uh, kind of freezes for a second. Touch wood, I've not had any bugs and any blue screens or anything so far. It's two nights in a row I've been smashing this thing around all over the place, so... Overall, I'd say it's a pretty solid, stable uh, mod. Uh, yeah, it gets through the trees, no issue at all. I was even able to stick it in eye and go flying up here. Well, again, not ridiculously flying. It's not like some major high-speed rally car, but still, yeah, just enjoyable. Like I say, it's, they've spent so long at the low end of trucks in this game, or the low speed end, regardless of what truck you've got. It's nice to have something that just goes with a little bit mental and uh, yeah I won't always have this thing maybe with the OP engine and all the rest of it but it's nice to have power and just actually muscle your way through the terrain in that sense though it's sort of a little bit like a twin steer I'd certainly say it's more capable than the twin steer but I just mean that was always pretty decent for just kind of forcing its way through the terrain and getting away with uh, more than it probably should yeah I like the fact that when it tips you can uh, fling the winch out. I don't know what the hell I winch to there. <laughs> it must have been like a goddamn horse of a vehicle waiting in the uh, mountain or something. Because whatever it was, it anchored me pretty well and flipped me back. So next up, the cargo and the turning circle. And to be fair, it was a tight squeeze. <laughs> don't know what she said, but yeah, it went pretty well. Just about missed the wall. I only brought the f five slot trailer instead of the eight slot because turning around that yard's a bit iffy with the eight slot. And I really don't think this thing it ain't going to make any difference whether it was the 8 slot or the 5. I think this thing is just going to muscle along. No issues. You can see now, though, because I've got that rotator thing off and I'm just like a bare chassis, this thing can pick up speed pretty well. I'm in auto and it suddenly uh, gets going. Almost not far off how some of the trucks do, like the Jeff Special. It's almost like trying to just make itself do that. But yeah, that's one of the things I like about it, though. I can tone it down as I want. I can go and put that special edition engine in instead of the OP one, and I can tone the gearbox down, I can tone everything down. It even gives you the stock options that you've got in the game on, I assume, stuff like the stock twin steer engine and all the rest of it, the balance gearbox, the off-road gearbox. So, for those of you that definitely, you know, lean on the side of, like, you don't want anything remotely OP and you like ticking along in a low gear and all the rest of it, it's... Yeah, there's options with this truck. It doesn't have to be this crazy brute thing. It's uh, You can definitely tone it down to more like how the rest of the trucks are balanced in the game, really. Yeah, here's my trailer store. I've been missing this. I've uh, not had any trucks to review for a while, so... Not any reason to really go for a drive-through here. 
no surprise this thing kind of ticks along pretty nicely has no issues <laughs> running out of room it's like well I'll just keep going down here we'll squeeze it in somewhere and then for this next bit I do go for a little blast in the water but I basically went back got the rotator or whatever the hell it's called the wrecker add on I'm just going to call it that and I'm uh, towing a dolphin because as I said when you remove that wrecker thing this thing's like pretty damn powerful and cutting through here with when I just detached the trailer and all the rest of it yeah it was just too easy not that it was like horrible or anything like that but I thought I'll just go and get the weight back with this wrecker add-on uh, attempt to bring a dolphin just to try and I don't know add a bit of balance to it let's see how it actually does when it's uh hauling stuff yeah squeezing through these rocks certainly not really helped by the twin rear wheels but again that the winch yeah the winch is very nice not only has it got a ridiculously uh long reach to it it's about as powerful as you could go in the game like i say some of the trees that can be ripped out the floor if you hit them hard enough like yeah if your truck ain't moving it will rip the tree out the floor which is good <laughs> that's definitely something i like to see so i tipped over slightly um picked the dolphin back up there's no real issues again it freezes for a second it's just because i'm switching to the interior view as for the interior view, I mean, you can see the bonnets, you sit quite low in the seat, not that it really matters, but there's not much view that way, there's not much view that way other than Pornhub. Uh, the mirrors, not doing a hell of a lot. I probably am wheeling a little bit because I'm trying to haul this dolphin up the hill. So overall, I mean, yeah, it's not the end of the world. If you're going over the brow of a hill, you probably uh, your bonnet and everything is going to get in the way. All things considered though, it's having no issues dragging the uh, dolphin along. I was just messing around a bit. I edited it out in the end, otherwise this video would just be even longer. Had no trouble scooting over that river though. Particularly having the raised suspension, or like the active suspension in lifted mode. It uh, keeps the nose quite high. The front tyres as well are pretty damn close to the front of the truck. I apologise, there's a little glitch there. As to be expected though, it motored through that mud with a... Uh, yeah, no real issue. Mud, if anything, is the thing that does slow this down and sort of bring it back to earth. Little patches like that aren't really an issue, but you'll see coming up. I'm going to go to like the Devil's Mud section pretty soon. While I mention it, or while I'm thinking about it, sorry, that little uh, flasher bar that's on it, like instead of just the traditional beacons we've had. Yeah, I quite like that. It looks pretty cool. Like, it's not too in your face, but yeah. I, uh, I can't remember if I've got the option to remove it or not, but either way, I'll leave it, I'll keep it on. I'm not sure if I've got the suspension raised at the minute, but it's certainly got enough ground clearance that it can bump up all those little ledges going across there. I think it was about now where I, yeah, I had a suspicion, like, mm, let's give it a go. It can be a little bit springy, particularly when you have got this raised, it's like... Yeah, there's a lot of weight to this truck, though. And in a good way, it feels one of the more realistic trucks in the game, weight-wise. As I said, with the standard game, some of the trucks just feel like they're made of paper mache or something. They feel like they'd float away in the wind. But this actually feels like it's a... Yeah, got some heft to it. And cutting through the snow, no issues there at all. It motors along just fine in high wasn't sure but it does just make it under the pipe with no issues with a crane uh, crane fully lowered and yeah cuts across that like as sort of a bit of a trollish snowy section but has no issues over there even as you'll see now I've got to this road so I just left this last bit in uh, if any of you ever driven on this little bit before it's normally slows you down to yeah one mile an hour whereas this thing and I actually think though again that is more realistic because if you're in a place like this, the ground's going to be frozen solid. So if you've only got like, you know, five or ten inches of snow, I don't think it's going to slow something down that's going to be like a thousand horsepower with six dual rear wheels and all the rest of it. It's, uh, yeah, I think that's more realistic to how a truck would behave. Because what I would say in this game, oh yeah, there's again, like, just suddenly whipped up to speed as I was going along the road. I think because there's no, like, or very little friction on those roads. When I was in high range, again, it almost like auto just specialed and just went flying down the road. 
yeah, I was going to say though, it's like in this game you kind of got, well, theoretically you got like simulation and you can have something that's sort of physically impossible and this game, if anything, I think is beyond simulation. It's like almost, yeah, more restrictive than real life. With some things, like I think this kind of truck, you could fly down a dirt road at 50 miles an hour. I'm not saying in real life that that's, that's what I mean. It's not unrealistic, but it certainly wouldn't be advisable in real life because in real life you don't drive your truck for an hour, you're going to have it for years, so you're not going to be smashing it down a road, but it's not to say you can't, so it's nice now with something like this that you have the option there and it now gives it back to me to say, okay, throttle control, gear control, whereas, yeah, in the base game with a lot of the stuff, a lot of my impatience comes from the fact of how restrictive it is in certain areas. When I eventually get to a road or something, I've got that, yeah, slight impatience, like, eh, I've sort of, it's not quite up to the expectations. So then I'm a little bit impatient and in a rush to kind of catch up and, yeah, that's, I don't know, it's sort of hard to explain, but it's like, that's the general feeling I get. And that's why I'm tense, anywhere I can stick it in high range and go flying, I do. Whereas with something like this, once I've had my mad five minutes and all the rest of it, if more trucks were balanced nearer to this kind of thing, like I said, it gives the choice back to me then to, um, yeah, various throttle control and all the rest of it. And I also won't be feeling like impatient every time I get out of four inches of snow that's just took me five minutes to drive through. So overall, it'll kind of cause me to act a little bit more naturally <laughs> than just trying to go mad everywhere I can because for yeah 95% of the game it's try not to let it well probably not 95% that's a bit of a, a bit of an over exaggeration but you know what I mean I believe as well sorry cutting through that uh, devil's mud you can see it near enough slowed it down it didn't quite stop so I recovered it to the garage and now instead of the dual rear studded tires or whatever I've got them true jewels or something they're called by quasi um they're OP, they're like, all the stats are excellent and all the rest of it. I just wanted to see if it made any difference going through the mud, and to be honest, it really sort of didn't. They're about the same. I ended up winching over to the edge a bit, and yeah, deep mud, it was like the same regardless. No issues getting up that hill, though. Nearly went for a big old uh, wheelie as I was trying to roll back down. I was trying to get a little bit more of a smoother angle. I was kind of distracted a bit by this point. But yeah, they dig in. I still think the dual rear studded tyres, whatever, the chain, basically. I think they would have got up there, no issues as well. And a big part of that, other than the tyre stats themselves, is the fact that this thing has enough weight to, yeah, actually plant itself into the terrain to take advantage of the grip levels. Again, it's nice that you can just fling a winch out when you rolled, and then uh, it glips there, apologies, but you can see the tree is now missing. Uh, I caught my back end on the tree I'm kind of still caught on now, so it ripped the tree I originally was winching to. That tree that's just kind of bent over, you can't rip them out or smash them out, no, what, no matter what you do, so I was ended up winching to that and I was able to flip. Uh, yeah, next up we're going to go to quarry and everything, but this is one of the other attachment add-on things you can have. It's a three-slot cargo box thing, but it's got uh, activatable doors at the back. You've also got ramps that can pop out and lower down. So you can still use it to, obviously it's going to have to be a truck that's narrow enough, but yeah, that's another cool option. You will notice that every time I select something on the menu, it jumps back up to the hood. That's why I accidentally activated that. That's like a tiny little bug. It's nothing special, but every time you activate the ramps or whatever, it just jumps back up to the hood option and you have to keep scrolling back down each time. So we popped a loaf in and uh, yeah, on our way in quarry, like I said. There's a goddamn professional on board now, so probably improve the situation even more. As for tyres, I think I went and got like the singles, but they're like big fat wide mud tyres, so they're not the OP ones, they're like a special edition or whatever. Pretty bloody good, but not infallible, not completely uh, just OP broken mode. To be honest, I don't really think, particularly with the wrecker on, that any of the mods on this are OP broken mode. They're certainly, easy, you know, at the top end of the scale, without a doubt, but yeah, I don't think it makes it some unrealistic, pointless endeavour. 
like I said, I think you could motor down a hill like that at that speed. I don't think it'd be advisable. I don't think your tyres and suspension would be particularly healthy after doing it for a day. But, yeah, that's my choice to make. I've got the uh, luxury of being able to recover and stuff on this game. So for this one, I wasn't really sure what setup to bring. Again, I could have brought an 8 slot, but it's a little bit fiddly. Um, I could have done the 3 slot cargo like sideboard on the back, but in the end I went for this. I've got a loaf in there and uh, yeah, brought a, what's it called, a ramped flatbed. Stick two concrete slabs on there. And uh, yeah, this truck doesn't really have any issues. The ramped flatbed, it probably is acting like a bit of an anchor, but... This truck has certainly got enough power to overcome it. But again, the fact that it is a wrecker, you would expect that. Like I said, that wrecker that lives near me, that's like a thousand horsepower, it essentially looks very similar to this. It's just a cab over. Um, yeah, that thing is towing like absolute monstrous army trucks down the road. They've got like massive trailers with a uh, not, ta I wouldn't say full on tanks, what did they have on there? It was some type of army gear, it wasn't a tank. It, I'm not sure if it's like an APC type thing, but. Whatever it was, it was towing some seriously heavy loads, and it, you know, does it without an issue. Just motors along like it's nothing, so... At the end of the day, there is things built in real life that are... have got some ridiculous power to them. Funny enough, I was watching a truck thing the other week on a YouTube, it was like truck drag racing. And when both the trucks set off, the front of the truck actually, like, does a little wheelie and twists, because the, there's that much, like, rotational force going through the prop shaft. It's essentially twisting the whole truck, and it's uh, that just shows you like the power on them is absolutely insane. But they're also real life trucks, so why not stick them in a game? Uh, yeah, went for a little roll down there. Fortunately, though, we have got a goddamn professional on board. Loaf trained, so we did a flip, and we are uh, back on the wheels. I'd admit at this point. The loaf was packed, which is another good thing, even though when it's in this box cabin thing or whatever, you can pack the vehicles. Um, yeah, because I rolled though, the loaf has become detached, so it's now a, a free floating horse inside there somewhere. Yeah, there's no issues flying its way up that little rock ledge. I did lose my concrete slabs on the way there. I don't think this really would have had much of an issue regardless, but yeah. These things happen. Went for a little... Uh, Got a little bit keen going down the hill. As for the quarry hills, though, it got at them pretty nicely. I was going to go in, like, high-low with the diffs on. Up the third quarry hill, but halfway, I got excited. Stuck it in high range. And, uh, yeah, almost did, like, a little jump over the top. I already knew when I was turning. Like, this is definitely going to tip. But That's, uh, yeah, with this winch. The winch is highly recommended. And at some point, maybe I'll stick a normal winch on it, but just, again, for having fun, that you don't need to go every time you roll, you go, oh, God, now I've got to go and bring another vehicle and tip it back. Sometimes you just want to click your fingers and be back on your wheels. A little bit like in Grand Theft Auto V, where they added, it's unrealistic, but when you roll a car, you can just hold left or right on the left or right analog stick, I can't remember which one, and you roll back to your wheels, because otherwise you'd tip somewhere in the mountains and have a 20 minute walk just to get back to civilization. It just cuts out a lot of hassle. Um, yeah. Wanted to see what state my little uh, professional was in. Good thing is he can't really tip anywhere while he's uh, sandwiched in there. <laughs> it's a pretty steep little uh, ramp to get down. I was like, oh no. But, ever the professional. There's a little flip. Beautifully timed winch. And there we are. One goddamn horse. Uh, yeah, next up, Lake Cobb. Give the ice a bit of a go for this one. I've kind of removed just about everything. I can't tell. The sleeper cab might still be on, but as far as weight goes, I don't think that's really making a difference. And yeah, with the dual rears or whatever, uh, well, all dual tyres, to be honest, these are the OP tyres again still. Uh, more for the sort of weight distribution that they offer than the uh, grip themselves. It does sort of break through the ice, but it's still light enough with this setup that it doesn't absolutely just bomb through to the floor. Like, it is possible to get get your way back out of there, but not guaranteed. You'll see now, sort of drive along the river more than cutting across. And, uh, yeah, at that point, at least the fronts are definitely 
about as low as they're going to go. Possibly, if it, you know, it wasn't for a mega long winch, could have got a bit iffy there. I'm back on now as well. It looks like the uh, the custom muds, or no, sorry, it might be the studded ones actually, like the chained basically. Went for a bit of Jeff special. It, pretty easy to do that, especially when you've got nothing added on the back. pretty fun. Spent a lot more hours flying around in this thing than uh, than ended up in the review. Yeah, next up is this rollback. I do definitely like this a lot. I think they uh, should have had this in the game on a lot of things, to be honest. But as I said yesterday, it's probably better that they, like, modders added this. Otherwise, the, they'd find some way to just nerf it and wreck it and make it just work, but awkward at the same time, like the cranes and everything when you're trying to lift stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't apologise for what's about to happen. <laughs> Couldn't resist. All, all I was trying to do was lower the roll back, and then uh, it started lifting the back of my truck up, so I was like, fair enough. We'll see. See how far up it can go. <laughs> Definitely what she said. <laughs> what I shouldn't have done then is uh, kind of let off and then floored it, did a bit of a wheelie. Started getting a bit leery. I have to say, though, as well, and it wasn't just with the loaf, it did it with a few things. This rollback bed thing is, I don't know how to explain it, it's almost like it's a bit sticky, your tyres sort of grip into it, but not as far as I'm driving up now, but when you stop, you sort of lock into it a little bit, it was doing it a bit with a club and a few other things as well, so, but yeah, goddamn horse of a vehicle, he made his way up there, handbrake's good, good enough to hold. Again, apologies, I seem to be getting nailed with some uh, little glitches in the worst possible moment. Yeah, this thing is very cool though. I mean, something like the Twin Steer would be a good uh, candidate to have this kind of thing on it. I'd actually make the Twin Steer a lot more usable, because as much as I do like the Twin Steer, and it's kind of a truck and a trailer in one without having to take a trailer, yeah, get, you can only get cargo on there. It's a bit of a narrow bed on the Twin Steer, all things considered. The cranes are so weak that trying to get a truck up on there is just a bit of a pain in the art. This thing overall just makes sense on the twin steer. <laughs> I set off and the loaf was off to the side about five or ten seconds before <laughs> some kind of OCD kicked in and I had to uh, centre the loaf. And yeah, it makes more sense now. I figured out, you know, what I said yesterday when I had the loaf on my back and I said I'm sure I flew down here a lot quicker. That wrecker add-on obviously weighs a lot more than this does. That's what I was saying with the engine. She got like the OP engine and the Westline V16 thing. When you've got this setup with nothing really weighing the wrecker down, the Westline and the OP engine both say S plus on the power, but when you've got the wrecker body on, the Westline thing drops down to like B plus, whereas the OP engine stays at S plus. Uh, yeah, flew into the water. Goddamn halter vehicle. He stayed on the back. I'm starting to worry now. That was like, oh no. Am I going to fire up the loaf? Fortunately, again, winch as long as my sock, and uh, yeah, I was able to reach a tree that's still all the way over there. We'll find a way. There's my OG trailer. It's been there, been there for a while. Uh, yeah, winch me way. Got managed to fire her up. Get on the rollback. So you can see I'm taking some pretty decent hits, 30 odd damage, but you can see from the little engine indicator in the bottom left. I mean, it's ticking along, but it's not wiped my truck out in, you know, five little hits. You see? He never gives up. He's ready to go. Got that professional. You were flown something. Again, I still haven't got the footage for that trailer. It's a bit disappointed about that. I basically went hurling down the runway as fast as I possibly could. Lost control near the end, smashed into the trailer, which has been sat up kind of near the cliffs for a while. And uh, yeah, went flying up into the air pretty well. And yeah, thanks to the winch, I was able to rescue myself. And of course, goddamn horse of a vehicle. He's always got to come along for the journey. Yeah, you'll see now a little bit, like the uh, club starts gripping in. Not just that, that might be the, like, chassis plate or whatever, the skid plate, but... It was a little bit odd, like the the rollback. Never any glitches or anything like nothing major. It just 
I don't really know how to explain it. Yeah, like I said, almost sticky is the best way. Um, yeah, so I'll give this a go. Stick the club on the back. It clearly uh, weighs more than this wrecker. But once I hoovered the roll back in, it got me there. It was pretty cool, actually, that it did let me pack the club. I was pretty happy with that. That might just be more the packing mechanics I've added to the game than this thing specifically, but whichever way. It's pretty cool that it uh, allowed me to do it. And yeah, this is like another interesting way that I can go and deliver some vehicles, because stuff like the Colob isn't the fastest thing. It'd be nice, you know, if you wanted to go and take it on Pedro Bay or something. But I could just load it onto this and fly to Pedro Bay a lot quicker than this thing. Same with the Tatarin, that's another one that's a very good vehicle. It's just incredibly slow and it just bores me half to death trying to get anywhere beyond like beyond eyesight from the garage. <laughs> um, yeah, something wasn't feeling quite right, so of course we went and got a loaf. There was room. There's always room for a loaf. I had a couple of little goes down here though. I wasn't able to do the Jeff special with all this stuff loaded on. But if I just left it in auto, it still did tick up to 8th gear. And uh, yeah, motors along pretty well. Pretty nice speed as far as the game goes. <laughs> Looks like a little uh, Superman cape flapping in the background. Uh, yeah, landed pretty hard. Squidged the trailer pretty well. You see the loaf now though. His nose just starts scooting towards the water. So I recovered the uh, collab to get it out of the way. Went back to the loaf. Fires up like a goddamn beauty. And the loaf, yeah, it does sink. But when you got it on this angle, it kind of... It floats enough to balance the truck like this. So it's keeping the uh, snorkel out of the water. Yeah, did my horn. Ruined one of my uh, airmail cargo packages. Right, this is the little crane, as you can see. As soon as you start driving, it absolutely just bends down. It also, this crane, maybe if I had it fully retracted, but it pretty much couldn't even lift the loaf off the floor. So, long story short, it was the same with this crane, the uh, American one as well, like the yellow crane. There is a few different cranes you can add on in the menu, but I tried, I believe, all of them, and they all seem to be the same issue. The Wrecker crane lifts everything on the game. These ones certainly need... Yeah, not only some more power to lift, but it, uh, you can see with the arm, when I winch to anything, instead of the crane lifting it, the crane would just bend down towards the vehicle. So uh, I quickly just started doing this instead, stick a winch on it and go flying down the runway. That's about exactly how I hit the trailer, and then it went flying off. <laughs> At this point, just quite a lot of messing around, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's probably, I don't know how integral to the review it is, but who cares. We need to know these things. <laughs> Why'd that have to glitch? Well, I drove past. I grabbed the loaf, as you can see. You've heard of ball in a cup. Well, this is loaf in a truck. i to try and clip them on the floor. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> he nearly got it. Yeah, high range feels pretty quick until you're doing something like flying at the cliffs and then it... It's not slow. It was just like, nah. A super, super high might have been nice for that situation. A damn professional. What well, I was trying, by the way, I, I am having a good old time with the loaf, I'm not going to lie, but I was seeing how well this thing can uh, get up into 8th out of 8th in auto, how well it can do the Jeff special when you tow in stuff, because it varies in the game whether you're towing, or you've got it packed on the back, or you've got it trying to fly it like a kite with a crane. Uh, yeah, that, that attempt went a little bit wrong. So we'll go for another one. Turning on this is pretty nice. Considering the length of the truck, it's not that far off the length of the twin steer, but it certainly turns a lot better. <laughs> you see, you get up some pretty nice speeds. One of the fastest speeds a loaf's ever been. Having the time of its life. However, I apologise, loaf, for what's about to happen. <laughs> it's like, bam! He felt it. See? Ever the horse of a vehicle is back on his wheels, he's ready to go. Can't keep a good loaf down. <laughs> he's ready. Yeah, we're going to go for another little uh, 
a little lap down the runway. I mean, long story short, this thing's plenty of power. It motors along, absolutely no issues. I'm able to get up to 8th in 8th or high range, I believe as well. Yeah, I'm doing it now, in fact. Uh, I was able to Jeff special it when I'm towing the load, however. Things went a bit awry. Headbutted a dolphin, as you do. See, this thing <laughs> it gets a bit springy. And it is tippable as well, even though it's not bad because you've got like the dual wheels, they sit nice and wide and all the rest of it. And its weight is fairly low down, but it's not impossible to uh, tip it. Of course. <laughs> sorry, not sorry, but it's just a goddamn beast. It allows you to carry on all the time. See? You can't keep a good load down. And yes, he got out of there. No issues, drove back up to the top. Had a little look around. Um, this is the thing when I switched all like the chrome, uh, like radiator, bonnet, fuel tanks, uh, exhausts, snorkel things, air filters, whatever, all to chrome. It looks pretty cool to be honest, especially in the black as you can see it's a very nice clean fresh black paint job. This was a loaf that wasn't packed, just seeing. <laughs> you know, I saw art after that one. <laughs> well. I'm glad we know. And uh, yeah, last start, I forgot to do that. The amount of times I've been editing this and then I was like, oh yeah, shit. <laughs> I forgot to go and add that. I forgot to go and do like a water test, snorkel test. It's having too much of a good time with my loaf. It gets down there pretty well. Again, the wider tyres helps it not tip and that back and forth. The snorkel is about the same as the twin steer snorkel. Technically, if it could be, say, it's set a bit further back, like behind the sleeper cab sort of be even better but overall it's a pretty tall vehicle I've also got the suspension that I can uh, stand up on so yeah it goes pretty deep <laughs> again that's what she said damage wise as well the engine's got plenty of health I've also got uh, yeah the sleeper cab well in fact no this wrecker add-on's got yeah eight nine hundred points whatever the sleeper cab I think has got a hundred there's also another little add-on between kind of the crane and the sleeper cab that's got a few spare tires and fuel and repair points so uh, yeah overall it's good and the amount of repair points is good because in this game you can hit especially with the trollish nature of the damage you can hit your suspension and wipe out 300 points just like that so having 900 points on you isn't like OP as in you're going to go forever but it, at least you can get to your destination and just wipe out what the, uh, the trollish nature of the damage has actually done to you so that's it I didn't quite make it over to the other island it drowned uh, yeah, in conclusion, it's a very good truck, well worth getting, I would say. It's the only mod I've tried so far, so I appreciate... I don't know what it's like, say, relative to the others, but I can certainly come to... There's two possible conclusions. Either this is extremely good, as far as mods go, or all the other mods are also all extremely good, in which case this is relatively <laughs> similar to the rest of them, but you know what I mean. The end result is, it's a very good truck in this game. It brings a lot to the game, it adds a lot of variety, a lot of power, there is a, you can get it from an OP version to a stock version, so whichever, I don't know, tempo floats your boat, there's a, yeah, the option there to buy it, it's a, in the menu, it's only about 48 odd grand, even fully upgraded, it was about 140, so, you know, I'd be paying like half a million for this and it wouldn't really bother me, and um, yeah, so, pretty bloody good, I'd say, if you're going to download the mods and you get that far, if you've managed to make your way past all the bugs, it's the first thing I grabbed, and I, I don't regret it. Like I've been having a good old time. That's why I did the review tonight again, because I just wanted to drive it again. So, uh, yeah, that's about it for today, though. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon members, and I'll be back soon.